Uh, I'm pleased to have this opportunity to address you today on the work of the Basel Committee in my capacity as its Secretary General. I'll keep my, my opening comments brief, um, but I would like to focus my introductory remarks on three topics. First, I'll provide you with some brief background on the Basel Committee, and in particular, its governance and operations. Second, I'll outline the key elements of the Basel Committee's reform following the global financial crisis and emphasize why these reforms have been developed. And then I'll say a few words about the committee's outstanding post-crisis reforms. And I think I'll touch upon some of the, the questions that were raised um, in Madame President's uh, opening remarks. Let me start with a, uh, a quick overview of the Basel Committee. As you know, we're the primary global standard setter for the prudential supervision and regulation of banks. We provide a forum for cooperation on bank supervisory matters for central banks and supervisory authorities. Our mandate is this, to strengthen the regulation, supervision, and practices of banks worldwide with the purpose of enhancing global financial stability. Sound global prudential st standards are a public good. Combined with effective bank supervision, they are indispensable components that promote the safety and soundness of banks, as well as resilient banking systems. Let me just emphasize the importance of strong global regulatory standards. First, strong standards enhance the resilience of internationally active banks and the financial stability of indiv individual jurisdictions in which they operate. Next, by creating a level playing field, sound global standards facilitate the efficient use of financial resources and efficient capital allocation. Also, a resilient banking system is better able to support the real economy and contribute positively to growth over the medium to long term. In addition, Basel Committee standards are global minimum standards. Once agreements are reached at the Basel Committee, it's then the responsibility of jurisdictions to convert the standards into law or regulation. And finally, in the absence of a global prudential standard, regulatory fragmentation results and large interna internationally active banks need to comply with a balkanized set of rules from multiple jurisdictions. This is both costly and inefficient. As you know, the Basel Committee reports to, uh, it's called the Group of Central Bank Governors and Heads of Supervision, the GHOS, the GHAS, as we, uh, as we refer to them. That oversight body includes Banque de France Governor Francois Villois de Gallo and is chaired by European Central Bank President Mario Draghi. The group's role is to endorse the Basel Committee's major decisions and to set the committee's strategic priorities. Representation at the Basel Committee is global. More than, more than 30 jurisdictions participate in Basel Committee meetings. There are 53 people uh, in the room, including members and observers. Our membership includes all of the G20 members, and we report on a regular basis to the G20 leaders regarding the work of the Basel Committee. Approximately one-third of the Basel Committee's membership is from the European Union, including the ECB and the Single Supervisory Mechanism. The European Commission and the European Banking Authority are also active participants in the work of the committee. France is represented on the committee by the Banque de France and the Autorité du Contrôle Potentiel et de, et de Résolution. Je suis désolé. ACPR, it's a lot easier. The, the Basel Committee has no legal personality, nor does it possess any formal enforcement authority. As articulated, in our publicly available charter, the committee relies on its members' commitments to implement agreed standards. Committee members remain directly accountable to their national legislature. The manner in which the agreed standards are applied is at the discretion of the jurisdictions. Some have chosen to apply the rules to just the largest internationally active banks in their jurisdiction. For example, that's the case with the, the US and Japan. Others, like the European Union, have chosen to apply the rules to all financial institutions. I, I'd like to briefly touch upon the governance, um, the process of how the Basel Committee works. We have three guiding principles. The first is an unyielding commitment to our mandate, which is to strengthen the regulation, supervision, and practices of banks in order to enhance financial stability. The second principle is our reliance on an extensive public consultation process. A wide range of stakeholders contribute to this process, including industry participants, academics, analysts, central banks and supervisory authorities, the, and the general public at large. The third principle that guides our work is a comprehensive and rigorous assessment of the impact of the committee's policy proposals. 
The results of the public consultations and the impact assessments that we conduct are key inputs that help inform the design and calibration of the committee's standards. Um, let me just briefly touch upon uh, the work of the Basel Committee since the global financial crisis. The deficiencies laid bare by the crisis are well known, as are the disastrous results, but memories are short. The context in which we developed our response to the crisis and the aftermath are therefore worth repeating. The crisis highlighted a number of weaknesses in the financial system and the global regulatory framework, um, and, and you, know, you know these well. Too much leverage, excessive credit growth, a high degree of systemic risk, inadequate capital buffers and insufficient liquidity buffers, and excessive ex exposure to liquidity risk. These weaknesses amplify the depth and se severity of the global crisis. At the peak of the crisis, the market lost confidence in the reported solvency and liquidity positions of many banks. The weaknesses in the banking sector were transmitted to the rest of the financial system and the real economy resulting in substantial costs. Almost a decade since the onset of the crisis, the global economy is still recovering from its effects. These costs include much higher public debt, increased unemployment, and considerable output losses. What, what did we do in response? We introduced a comprehensive, wide-ranging wide -ranging strengthening of the global banking standards, most notably through the Basel III framework. In addition to strengthening the regulatory framework, the committee has introduced a range of measures to align incentives and to strengthen banks' governance arrangements. It's continued to improve the effectiveness of supervision, and in addition, to promote full, timely, consistent application and implementation of the reforms. In 2011, the Basel Committee put in place a rigorous framework to monitor and review its members' implementation of the Basel regulatory framework. Let me turn to the committee's remaining regulatory reforms. One of our key objectives in conducting this work was, is to restore full confidence in the regulatory capital framework. The committee is doing this by enhancing the, ro the robustness and the risk sensitivity of the standardized approaches for credit risk and operational risk in a way that'll help facilitate the comparability of banks' capital ratios. We also expect to replace the existing capital floor with a more robust floor based on the committee's revised standardized approaches. Let me em emphasize that an output floor is not new. It's been part of the capital framework ever since the committee agreed to recognize internal models for purposes of calculating regu regulatory capital. The output floor places an overall limit on the benefits derived from banks' use of internal models. Another important revision on which we're working is to place limits on certain inputs used to calculate capital requirements under the internally modeled approach for credit risk and removing the use of the internally modeled approach for operational risk. And finally, we expect to revise the leverage ratio by introducing a surcharge that will further limit, limit the leverage of global systemically important banks. Much of this technical work has been completed and discussions are ongoing to finalize these remaining floor, uh, reforms. One remaining element to be finalized is the output floor. This is a critical component of the framework. Given its importance, we're taking the appropriate time to carefully consider a reasonable calibration that's suitable as a global standard and which will help ensure the integrity of the capital framework. In conclusion, let me acknowledge the importance of regulatory stability. We know that banks, investors, and other stakeholders need clarity and certainty when it comes to the global regulatory capital framework. The remaining revisions to the Basel framework have been usefully informed by extensive public consultations and equally extensive quantitative impact analyses. We're aware that some institutions will be affected more than others. As a result, it's likely that the final set of re revisions will include transitional arrangements to provide time for banks to adjust to these changes. This was the approach the committee took in 2010 when we introduced the earlier Basel III changes. There are costs so associated with, regulatory, with regulation, but they pale in comparison with the costs of financial crises. The benefits of sound prudential regulation, such as reducing the frequency of financial crises or mitigating their effects, far outweigh the costs. Madame President, thank you very much for your attention, and, uh, and particularly for this opportunity um, to, to speak with you today and to answer your questions. Um, and I would be very pleased to answer those questions. Merci.